Yeah, g'day, it's uh, ZL2 Charlie Tango Mike again. There's a couple of questions asked about how things have been wired up. So I just, I just want to quickly go through some wiring and and then talk a little bit about the the two Iowa Hills filter programs. So at the moment, the TNC I've actually hooked up now, the SI5351, which is up here, that's now been connected up to the TNC, as well as a rotary encoder. Um, so what we've done there is, and as you can see there, the rotor encoder now, the frequency down here, we can we can tune around. So there are uh, just a, a, a continuous wave coming through out the other side. And then just by pushing in the switch, you'll see the little bar underneath the numbers. If I push now and move to the right, I'm now changing that one. I can click across, I'm now changing. So that's just, I've just got two bounds, the lower and upper end of um, the 70, uh, the 80 meter band. Anyway, so the way it's been wired up, if I just take this little bit of paper here, um, we have the rotary encoder um, has two sides to it. Um, there's essentially the, the, the switches, which is part of the rotary encoder, and then there's the push button switch. The center pin goes to ground, and then the two outer pins for the rotary encoder go to 24 and pin 25 and then the switch one side is earth and the other side goes to pin 26 and we'll look at the code later on um, how that's been set up so that's what I'm seeing there for the rotary encoder the good thing about the Teensy is that all the pins are interrupt pins um, so then I can assign two interrupt service routines for these two lines here so depending on which direction the rotary encoder is going um, that triggers um, a, couple of, uh, a couple of interrupts. The SI5351, the way I've got that wired up, um, VIN just goes to 3.3 volts. Ground, I just picked up one of the grounds here. In fact, I've got a switch input just on the back here. I just picked up a ground on that. Uh, SDA of the 5351 goes to pin 18, and SCL goes to pin 19. Um, which on the Tensi are the, the SCL and the SDA uh, zero lines. The LCD, um, LCDs are an interesting bunch. There's all different styles out there and they're all subtly different and they all have subtly different libraries and they can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get going. In this particular case, um, the way I've got this one particularly wired up and the library seems to work quite well, um, there's seven lines coming in. There's a ground and a 3.3 volts. This is a 3.3 um, a to 5 volt compliant LCD, so it runs quite heavily on 3.3 volts. Um, and as per the labels on the back of this particular screen, I've got reset, A0, SDA, SCK, and CS, and they go to respectively um, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37, um, which just so happens to be some spare pins on the Teensy. You've got to be very careful because a lot of the pins down this end of the Teensy are for communications with the audio board. You do have a few free ones but because I've got the 3.5 here and there's a whole lot of free pins at the far end that are not associated with the audio uh, board it's just easy for me to go and steal those straight away. So over here I've got some spare ones which are just switching uh, to some test switches here just switching earth to those. So that was the screen, how it's been wired up. Um, the SI5351 and the rotary encoder. And like I say, that's that's all working fine. Now there was a question about um, the, the the clock generator over on the uh, the main board. Uh, what I'm using there, if I can sort of see that, doesn't look too bad. Um, is a 74HC74. This is a, a, a circuit you see all the time on the internet. There's nothing special about this one. Um, and it's just wired up as you can see here. So um, I won't go into it. You'll be able to pause this video and see how it's been just being wired up. Um, it's a 14 pin IC made up of two flip flops internally. Uh, so the pins, the numbers here coincide with the actual pins on the device itself. Uh, what I have found in the past works very well is just this little voltage divider so basically just setting up in the quiescent condition i.e. nothing coming in from the 5351 if you set up um, a couple of 10k resistors here hanging off 5 volts so you don't get very much current going through here you can set this at 2.5 volts um, for the for the clocks and I find that's quite useful and just sort of removes any jitterness and noise and I get a nice clean 
um, clocking of the of the flip flops. Uh, the outputs I'm just using 100 nanofarads, so the old typical 104 uh, caps. And in the end, what I sort of did, I initially had a voltage divider network here and a whole raft of different things, but quite frankly, at the moment, it's working quite well with this two 20k trim pots um, providing. Uh, the RF drive ultimately to the two mixes, the two SBL1 uh, mixes, and that seems to work quite well. So what I'll do now is I'll just sort of move the camera a bit and see if I can hopefully pick up on the computer screen, and we'll just sort of run through um, some of the some of the software, and hopefully it'll come through quite nicely. So I just brought up there. This is um, the audio control design tool that. Um, comes with a Teensy, so if you go to P, PJRC, or if you just honestly, if you just search Teensy and audio control panel, and you'll come up with this. Um, and what I wanted to do here is just sort of, if you, if you on the left hand side, you've got all sorts of controls you can bring in. I've just dragged in a fur one, and if you click on it, on the right hand side, it tells you how to configure and talk to this, uh, and you'll see a lot of this, um, these commands in the main code. But suffice to say, when you're setting up some coefficients to feed into this device, you need to um, set the sampling frequency to 44117, and that'll become apparent very shortly, um, and you need to feed it um, integers, uh, which we out a bit later on is uh, I use shorts, and that seems to work quite well. So that's, suffice to say, um, if you just bring any of these across, uh, gosh, uh, IC2, you know, if you click on that, it, tells you how the, the shield works um, and how you talk to it but pretty enough on that one so um, what I'll do is I'll just have a quick look at these two filter programs here for the for generating the coefficients these are free they're from Iowa Hills and if you go to their website to download you will see um, a whole series of downloads and I've just taken the one for the the Hilbert filter design on the right hand side here for the normal fur filter. So if we just pick on the um, the Hilbert transform side, if you recall we needed to have two 45 degree filters um, advancing and retarding by 45 degrees. To do that step one in the sampling frequency put 44117 so you, you recall that from the, the design program and once you hit that you can then start to play around with to tune your um, the frequency you want. In this particular case it's um, it's a passband one, so that'll be the center frequency. Um, this in this particular case I've arbitrarily chosen um, 10 kilohertz as the the IF so to speak going into the um, device and I've arbitrarily selected the bandwidth to be um, 10 kilohertz. So what I'm trying to do there is I'm sort of just thinking well you know a double sideband signal coming in would be 2.8k on either side plus a bit of fat so it takes me to around 10k so no sort of real science there um, I decided to pick on 76 taps if you decrease there's quite a big drop in the in the, um, the attenuation band here at around 76 but not much change after that so in terms of trying to reduce the computational load on the Tensi to run this filter I've just sort of gone back to, to 76 taps and I find that's about right under passband you need to select phase added and as soon as you add click on phase added you then have the ability to set the phase in this particular case we want to have 45 degrees I'm going to add um, and I found that a raised cosine of 0.85 has quite a nice sort of roll off on either side so that's minus 40 dB down there so uh, that's not too bad when you're happy you just go calculate and that will now behind the scenes calculate the, um, the coefficients. You can view those coefficients by clicking on here and here goes the whole list of coefficients. So again, control. Um, what I, well, you can view them. What I find the easiest thing to do is if you go to File, Save Coefficients, you can now save those um, to a text file and you can open up the text file later on and cut and paste them back into the main program. So that's very quickly how you do the Hilbert one. And then later on, when you want to do the minus 45s, just crank that down to it goes down to a minus. For the low pass filter, um, and also the band pass filter, I use this particular program. This is just the normal fur filter design. In this particular case, on, under pass band, I've selected band pass. So this is the 
akin to a crystal filter just tuning for the upper or lower sideband. So again 44117, as soon as you enter that you now have the ability to adjust um, the cutoff frequency or the center frequency sorry point in this particular case and the bandwidth. Um, so I'm sitting this on the lower side band so 10 kilohertz is the carrier and then coming down to the left um, will be the, the lower side band. So I've got that centered at 8.5 kilohertz with a bandwidth of 2.8k. Um, again 76 taps because the, the, really the difference between the two was not a huge amount. Um, again raised cosine 0.85. Honestly you can play around to your heart's content but in this particular case these are just some settings I decided to play with for experimenting with, with the Teensy. When you want to do the low pass filter it's just a matter of selecting low pass again 44117 and now you can start to set um, your roll off frequencies that's the, the, the 3 dB point in this particular case um, again file save coefficients and you can save those so in the main program itself um, the best way to get around that is to I'm sure see that. I think, oh, sorry apologies there um, the best way there that I've found, um, and, I, and this is certainly not me making this up, um, I've had some help on that one. So here you need to, if you recall, you need to convert, or you need to be able to provide to the Teensy's filters down here when you assign them, um, you need to assign integers. So in this particular case, I'm creating a, um, well this, these are all the same fur filters, um, when you assign the coefficients, these need to be integers. And the easiest and quickest way to do that is to just to multiply that big series of coefficients that came out of the Iowa Hills program by 32768, just straight out multiplication, and you'll convert that. It'll round it to the nearest integer, but um, close enough. And then just assign them as short. So that particular format there um, is in a big array. In this particular case, it's, it's 76 taps. Uh, or 76, um, oh, I forgot the term, um, yeah, let's call them bins in the array, R array location, sorry. And that's very much in a nutshell um, a race through um, the use of those two filter programs to generate the coefficients, these ones here, and then how to convert those into integers, which is what's needed by the, um, by the Tensi program. Um, I think I'll probably knock off there because it's going to be a bit of a long, uh, a long video. Again, please in the comments if there's anything else you want me to sort of focus in on, let me know, and um, I'll endeavour to put something up. Um, yeah, I think that's probably all for now actually. Yeah, um, I could I could go on forever about talking about these. A lot of these, how to how to do this is all explained really well in this design program. It really is a super better kit. And it's just so simple to literally, the output of that goes the input of that one, that one goes there, I want to put the output of that one to the input of that one, and you go, that looks fantastic. And when you click export, it actually generates um, the code that you then need to plug back into your program. So if you actually look closely at what was generated here, um, so that audio input and the like, um, back in the main program, it's all these assignments here, and you just use your own um, uh, names that make sense to yourself. So honestly, it's a, uh, a very useful and easy tool to to design. Um, the way I do it these days, I don't actually do this. This I use this to sort of get started, and now I just go directly into here, um, and I just sort of think the output of one. In this particular, goes to the inputs. So outputs, in, inputs. Um, and off you go. Um, but yeah, look, if I was to say, for example, this audio effects multiply, if I didn't know how to use that back in that design tool, if, and here we are, well, here goes a mixer, for example. If I click on mixer, on the right hand side, it tells me how to use it. So I can set the gain for a channel and at any level. Um, if I go to synth, we don't want to synth, we want to go to. Uh, 
I'm just looking for one well, of those FFTs, the fast Fourier transforms that you use. So you you will have seen the main code FFT dot available. So it's this tells you how to use it here. Um, I'm just looking for multiply. There it is. So there's an example um, of how you can have two inputs being multiplied together, i.e. a mixer, um, in the true sense, as opposed to a, a summer. And by clicking on that on the right hand side, tells you how to use it. So um, there goes the audio effect multiply, that's what it's called, um, and then how to use it. So it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Again, please, any comments, just let me know. Uh, if you find these really boring, again, let me know. Um, but I'm just trying to, trying to share what little knowledge I have. I am certainly no way an expert in this, but I certainly enjoy tinkering around and trying to make stuff work. Uh, and if that can be helpful to someone else, fantastic. That's the, that's the whole spirit of ham radio. Anyway, thanks so much, fellas, and, uh, and for lessons, I should say. And um, we will catch you next time. Ciao.